Belgium. November 29th, 1989. Policemen on patrol outside the city of Eupen see a mysterious triangular object with blinding lights hovering over a field. For the police officers, it is the beginning of a three-hour journey tracking the UFO across the countryside. For Belgium, it is the beginning of a nearly two-year-long wave of UFO sightings. The significant wave of sightings over uh, Belgium, in particular, in 1989 and 1990, of triangular aircraft have yet to be identified to this day. On that first night, the police are swamped with telephone calls from 150 witnesses. Soon, sightings of the Yupin Triangle, as it comes to be called, are reported throughout the country. The UFO phenomena there results in an unprecedented level of cooperation between various government agencies and private UFO investigators. Some consider the actions taken in Belgium a model for developing a plan to deal with other UFO incidents. The Belgium Air Force quickly takes the lead in setting up a procedure for tracking this unidentified flying object. Colonel Wilfred de Browner, the Air Force's chief of operations, coordinates a special task force to work with local and national police agencies, as well as civilian UFO investigators. On the night of March 30th, 1990, the triangle is sighted again. Belgian F-16 fighters are scrambled from Beauvachain Air Base. Despite flying for over an hour, the pilots are unable to make visual contact with the UFO, but do manage to record radar images of it. The encounter leads some to speculate that the Yupin Triangle is actually an American craft. If so, the most likely culprit would be the F-117A stealth fighter. This secret, triangular-shaped aircraft is designed to have a minimal radar signature. But sophisticated analysis conducted on both ground-based and onboard radar images of the Yupin Triangle calls this theory into doubt. According to the radar, the UFO could, within seconds, accelerate from 170 to 1,100 miles an hour and drop from 11,000 feet to near ground level. Maneuvers like those would generate an enormous G-force, far in excess of what military testing films show a human can endure, thereby dismissing the possibility of the UFO as man or American-made. The sightings in Belgium, whatever their source, eventually subside. But not before nearly 2,000 people report seeing that flying triangle. After that wave had passed, uh, some members of the European Parliament wanted to organize a, a UFO investigative body, or actually they wanted to contract a French UFO organization to work with them to check into UFO reports that were on a European-wide basis. That organization is known as SEPRA, a French acronym for Service for Assessment of Atmospheric Reentry Phenomena. Housed in France's National Center for Space Research, it is a cooperative European effort for collecting and analyzing UFO information from around the world. In 1999, SEPRA's extensive data provides the basis for a report issued by a French group called Cometa which translated is the Committee for In-Depth Studies. There have been various studies over the years, but this is really an historic study because of the caliber of the people that wrote it and because of the conclusion that they drew. And this study said a number of interesting things, not the least of which was that the most likely explanation for the phenomena studied is extraterrestrial. In light of this conclusion, Cometa laid the groundwork for determining a contact protocol in their official report titled, UFOs and Defense, What Should We Prepare For? There's a lot of concern in the report that a lack of preparedness could lead to problems it's because if an event happens, people are not informed as to what the phenomena is and how they should respond. The report clearly states, for the moment, they do not appear to be meddling in our affairs, but it is advisable to ask ourselves what they are actually seeking. 
what should we prepare for? How should we prepare for it? And that's what, in fact, these military officials and government officials were trying to come across with, is that there had to be a preparation for this. If we do nothing, the very principle of defense and air intelligence would be called into question. They recommend that a, a, a widespread training campaign be undertaken to educate people in official positions how to respond, what the phenomena is, what the evidence is, what they should do if they encounter something. According to the report, those who must be utilized in this regard include meteorologists, space and aeronautical engineers, and air traffic controllers. Only the military controller has adequate equipment to detect a flying object that does not follow general air traffic rules, moving at the supposed speeds of UFOs. The report makes special mention of military pilots as our first means of intervention if, by chance, this were to prove necessary. But it goes on to express concern for the pilot of a commercial aircraft. Although he remains a primary partner in the quest for information, he would be totally powerless in the face of an aggressive stance by a UFO. One must be on guard against any instinctive self-defense reaction that could be easily interpreted as a provocation. Part of the concern is not to initiate any actions that could be dangerous. For instance, at a military base, if staff witnessed an object and didn't know anything about what it might be, that there could be a reaction of hostility. For instance, they, they wouldn't know, are they supposed to be defensive towards this object? The Comita report, although that was sent to the President of France, Jacques Chirac, and sent to a number, number of other high-ranking individuals, it's unclear what kind of impact the Comita report has had on policy. The problem is that when you're dealing with figuring out UFO policy, you're trying to put together a big puzzle with half of the pieces taken out. And often, they weren't taken out accidentally, they were taken out intentionally. So we, we don't have all of the information we would like. It's unfortunate, but that's the fact. Coming up, as Cold War tensions rise, the UFO problem threatens to trigger Armageddon.